So welcome to our virtual training. My name is Kelsey Nebone. I'll be the event supervisor this year, and in this session we'll discuss the Bridging the Gap competition. I put a link in the chat to the Macomb Science Olympia website. Hopefully you are familiar with this, but I want to point out that you can find the rules we're going to discuss here as well as potential material list ideas and your, your frequently asked questions. This will look um, like the, the picture here, you can see. Additionally, these are the rules. All of your questions, this is your number one resource page. If you can't find it there, there's a submission area on the Olympia website that we're working to get set up. So uh, the frequently asked questions will, the questions will get directed over to me for clarification. All right. So what is, what is bridging the gap? To start, the goal here is for students to build a bridge that supports the weight of a tennis ball for five seconds, and they're given 20 minutes to do this. The students will be supplied with a variety of different materials. They can be things such as paper, tape, straws, strings. It, it could be marshmallows and spaghetti. It can be pretty much anything. So we don't want them when you're practicing to get too used to using specific materials. Teams can use anything in the package that they're given, including the package itself. And I recommend that the students start out by inventorying the materials they're given. There will be a list posted in the room for them to check and make sure everything's correct. And if there isn't anything correct, they can come see us right away and get that taken care of instead of it being 10 or 15 minutes in and they think that they don't have the right number of skewers or something like that. We have a harder time validating it if we're a lot further into the event. The students will also be given two boxes to practice, hold, practice their bridge before they bring it up for official testing. And that's not for building, that's only for testing. So the students don't have to use all the materials that they're given. Sometimes the items won't be useful for their vision and, and that's okay. Uh, we just wanna make sure that they know they can use everything that they're handed. So the team goal is to construct that bridge spanning the greatest possible distance while still being able to support a tennis ball. Now let's show you what the platform looks like. Apologies, this is taken out of a, a screenshot from a video, but I don't have the, the actual device here. So what we can see is the, the two legs for the bridge to span across the top. Um, there we go. Your bridge will span here. These pedestals are movable to uh, adjust for the different length of bridge for the students. Now, the tennis ball uh, has to be towards the center, toward, to the center of the bridge um, when we're, we're doing that testing. So, the at the event, the students are going to build their bridge, they're going to practice, and at some point they're deciding that, all right, this is good. This is what we want to submit. This is our final. They'll inform a, a member of the crew that that is indeed what they want, and they'll give a rough estimate of the spacing they want in between these two legs. We'll set that up for them. The students will bring their bridge, put it across, determine if we need to make any adjustments, and then they will place a tennis ball um, on their bridge. It has to be supported for five seconds and then we can remove it and measure in between the two pedestals for that distance. Things to note about the bridge. The uh, bridge needs to um, not be connected to the platform, nor can it touch the ground or be supported by any platform besides the two edges of it. Things can fall off, that's fine, it happens, but overall, if anything is supported from a, a place besides those plates, it, it won't be considered effective. So let's talk about some visual representations of that. We have a bridge, bridge is represented by the orange, our yellow is our tennis ball. Top row is things that are acceptable, bottom row are things that are not. This would be maybe your standard version. You've got XYZ across here, balls in the center, it's fine. Maybe the students wanted to 
create an enclosure on the bottom and it hung below the bridge. That's also fine. They want to create a box on the top to hold the tennis ball. Also fine. Things that aren't fine. Putting the tennis ball over the support areas. Putting the tennis ball in a way that contacts the ground. Um, putting your, your holding position over a support. Those things are, aren't um, considered holding the tennis ball, so your, your bridge would be judged as, as not holding it. Now, what can your student bring in their room? How are they going to build this? So your team members are allowed to bring in rulers, scissors, pliers. Most likely you should or you should set it up so that each person on your team who's coming in has these tools. Don't let them bring anything in that could be harmful, knives, leathermans, things like that. I know pliers are on leathermans, but if it has a knife, it, it's not going to be allowed in the room. We really want them to, to stay safe while they're building. We'll review all the items as they enter the event. They can bring um, a pen and pencil as well if they want, but we can't guarantee that there'll be anything to write on. So, I, this is kind of my, my break point. Does anyone have any questions? I, I haven't seen any in the chat yet, so I just want to make sure you have the option. Okay. Uh, a quick little plug here. You saw it on the intro slide from John. There is a kit that can be purchased through Science Olympiad. Uh, it's got enough materials in it for roughly 10 builds, so 10, 10 versions. And if your team is using that, make sure you break up all the items in the kit into 10 different sets. Uh, you don't want to give them 10 builds worth of items that say, OK, build a bridge. Um, so let's let's talk through some of these examples. I realize the quality is not great, so we're just going to have to to work with what it is. These boxes you can see here, this is the same box setup I was talking about they'll have for practice. So this is well where, where they can suspend their bridge. With this team, they they used a triangle pattern which does a couple different things. It creates a, a heavier base here on the outside, which makes sense. You want heavier ends and lighter centers. Uh, a lighter center, or the heavier ends prevent your bridge from bowing in, right? You don't want it to bow down and touch anything that's external. The, the tried and true, just getting the, the connections across. Flat works, it, it does. Um, it all will just depend on the, the items they're, they're given. In this situation, this picture is important because the product was given to them in a bag. So you can use this part of your kit in your bridge. And you want to make sure your students have that mentality that anything that they're really given is something that they can use. In this bridge, I think I have a better picture here. We have supports across, which gives the tennis ball something to rest in. And when you have a bridge that gets, they get longer and longer, right? We start to see this dip happen. Now there's two, two things you need to be ca cautious of in this scenario. The first is if your dip like this happens, you're getting closer to the ground, which obviously hurts the bridge, as well as these ends, you're gonna start to slide Lastly, if the ends exceed past our plates, that's not considered a, a, a good bridge either. So while the students are looking to create a long bridge, it's better to have a bridge that's only six inches that holds a tennis ball than it is to have a three foot bridge that doesn't. Um, they'll be graded in that regard. So make sure that your students understand that it's really about making the the bridge that that works we we want them to work the the functionality is very important in the end if there's a tiebreaker we note down down the weight of the bridge so whichever bridge is the lightest will be the the winner in a tiebreaker and i can put a sample list of items in the chat for what one of our previous events were so that's 
that's in there now. I'll comment, I'll comment Kelsey. Kelsey. Yep. That, that the, um, the um, ties, ties are very rare in this event. So from a coaching perspective, I wouldn't advise a team to, to uh, try to minimize the weight of their brid, bridge and give up other important characteristics for that reason. Excellent, excellent point, John. Okay, those are the slides I have put together. I know people have questions. Um, I know if you're new to the competition, it can be a lot to take in as well. So is there anything anyone wants to know about? Any other questions that you have? I do see some people are typing, so I will, I await. Okay, uh, the first question we got is, what is the best way to have kids practice for this? Okay, the best way to have kids practice for this is to give them multiple different sets of items and help them construct a bridge out of those varieties. So for instance, the list here, the paper bags, forks, skewers, masking tape, this is one group of, of items they could get. You can go to, you know, Walmart, Kroger, wherever, wander around, maybe you swap out some skewers for popsicle sticks or um, the plastic straws, make a variety of plastic straws. Maybe they're coffee stirrers, maybe they're full um, bubble tea straws. Swap out the different items and create the, the place for them to figure out what different things can do and how different things can interact. There will always be some sort of adhesive material, okay? Be it tape, um, maybe styrofoam for them to stick skewers in. Uh, something that'll adhere things together. So have that in mind as well when you're picking out items. It doesn't really work if you just take seven different wood items that are all long and straight. That, that if there's nothing to adhere them together with, that's not something we would do. So have that in your mind when you're doing that as well. Uh, Crystal, let me know if that answers your question. Leslie, do we know the dimensions of the platform that the bridge rests on? Yes, those will be 12 by 12. I believe it's technically 30 centimeters by 30 centimeters on each side. That is in the rules as well, so uh, you can double check that information. All right, Sundar, students will on have only one chance to place the ball on the bridge and test. Uh, yes, so the students are going to place the tennis ball. Um, we will time that for five seconds, and then, then that is considered passing. So if anything happens after that, it's fine, as long as those five seconds are, are held to. Crystal, they will, okay, will they always have seven different items? No, but it will be a pretty, good range. It'll be technically anywhere from 5 to 15, but I will not be putting 15 items in there. So uh, seven between 7 and 10 is a pretty safe number. I'd like to comment on the question about one chance to place the ball on the bridge. Mm -hmm. uh, so the students will be provided uh, cardboard boxes like the ones that you see in Kelsey's photos while they're building, and they will also be provided a tennis ball that where as they're building, they can do trial tests of their bridge in the construction process. In the testing, the you know the formal testing where they'll be scored, that was the the situation that Kelsey was describing. Thank you, John. Renee, the kids need to know the approximate length of their bridge before they put it on the platform. If they put it up on the platform and they say, you know, we could get six more inches, then we'll adjust 
they will, the student will remove the bridge, will adjust the platform out, they can replace the bridge. The tennis ball is the, I guess, the final, if you will. So we can make those adjustments. Um, if they start to get within half inch adjustments where they're like, oh, can we scoot it out a little more? Can we scoot it in a little more? And they do it multiple times, that's when we'll put that kind of cap, like, all right, let's 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 not play around with this too much. Um, yes, the ball placement is final. They can't place the ball, do a measurement, and then decide they want to do it again wider. That That is not acceptable. All right, what is the difference between practice and testing? Okay, Crystal, the difference between practice and testing is that the students are given 20 minutes to build this bridge, and while they're building it, they're given these boxes to practice with the bridge. So they'll have two boxes and their own tennis ball in their space to continue making sure that their bridge is working how they want it to do. When they come to final test, they'll bring their bridge to, let me go back to that picture, to this apparatus, which is the, the official device, which will then set up to their requested dimensions, requested length, and they can, that'll be the final test. That'll be the official test that will be scored. Everything they do before that is just of their own volition and their own determining of what their bridge can do and how they can improve it in that 20 minutes. They will have to pick up their bridge and move it to our location for final testing, yes. This is not a timed event, so no points will be given if they finish before their 20 minutes. Like uh, noted, the tiebreaker is based on weight. Like John noted, tiebreakers are very rare. Excellent. Great questions, by the way. The wood platforms, this setup, these platforms are actually 30 centimeters by 30 centimeters. The boxes platform. They're actually very close in size. They're pretty it, close, the, the, yeah. the photographs make it look different, but they're not that different in size. Do we have any other questions? How do we order the kits? John, can you answer that question, please? Yes. If uh, you go to the MacombSO.org website and on our homepage, you'll scroll down a little bit. Uh, things have happened since that information has been released. Uh, there is a link there for ordering quick start kits. Um, if uh, you might want to check with your head coach if you're not a head coach uh, and just make sure that they haven't already purchased one on your behalf. The kits are $15 each. Yes, um, I was trying to see if I could get there. At the top of the chat, uh, there is a link to the website so you can get to the kit from there. Um, and as John said, check with your, your head coach. All right, if I am the coach, do I get to be in the area to help them? No, so the students come into this area by themselves. We tend to have fun and put up, you know, block out the, the windows so people can't peek in um, because of how this event rotates. No, it doesn't all start at once. Uh, different teams come in throughout the day and the materials are are a secret. So the rest of the students, we don't want anyone to get that information early. Uh, you get to coach your kids outside of the room, but once they come in the room, it's it's all it's all them. This year we'll have slightly different protocols than normal as well. That was a good description of how your event runs. Uh, because of COVID, um, I will say parents won't likely even be allowed inside the building. We'll be asking you to drop off your students at an exterior door that's well marked. And um, and then we you will know where to pick up your students 
at a uh, predictable time uh, when they're done. Crystal, Sarah, let us know if those, if that doesn't answer your questions. There will be volunteers. So the question was, will there be an adult staying with them? The there will be volunteers throughout this whole event that are are monitoring them and making sure everything's OK and keeping up on them. But there won't be anyone from their team inside the room with them. You're welcome, you're welcome. All right. No problem about all the questions. We would do this in person and have the same number of questions. So I'm just glad that we're able to have these questions and, and talk through these things and get you all answers that you need. Can I make a, um, a couple of comments about um, coaching advice? Absolutely. This is John. Um, what Kelsey's a mechanical engineer, so she comes well qualified for this. I happen to have a similar background. So my advice to you as coaches is um, that when you're early on and you're practicing with them is you ought to be more hands on and teach them some principles about what creates stiff and strong structures, right? And you, I'm sure you can find information online relative. It's it's not rocket science in that in that sense. There's just a few principles about how to make things stiff mm -hmm. um, and support and support and and also helping sort of inspire some creativity on their part for using materials in ways that they might not automatically think of. Right. So I think those are some of the things that really make teams stand out um, and are very successful in this event. And so and once you've done some teaching with them on some of those areas, then you want to try to turn that creativity over to them and get them to be independent of any help that you might give and challenge them. Give them, you know, you you don't want to give them too many materials to build with because then they'll become dependent on that. Right. You could uh, have ex just one particular week, give them Give them what appears to be almost not enough materials, right? And see what happens and get them to sort of work through that kind of a situation and see what the best they can do is, right? So give them a variety of experiences. Um, anyways, that's my, that would be the advice I'd be giving uh, if I were still a head coach. And to build off John's point, things that are intuitive for us, but not for students, these are things you'll want to address. Um, even off the top of my head, if, if you have two skewers or two pencils like these are, trying to tape them together like this so it's end to end is just going to create a bend, right? Whereas if they taped it on top of each other so it's now connected here, you're not going to get that that weakness. So it's a just those very basic things that you and I understand based off life experience, et cetera, in comparison to, to seven and eight-year-olds who just would go find a bigger stick instead. Well, if we don't have any other questions and I don't see anyone typing in the chat or anything, I, <laughs> I think I need a list of all the common sense stuff. It is, it, it's, in, in, to be honest, it can be a learning experience for you and the students, right? Um, there's always things that we learn and see as we watch them build, right? And that's something that I've witnessed with working with students. A lot of the times I might not know exactly what they're thinking or what their end goal is, 
but try and have them even explain to you what you're doing or what they're doing so that you can say, well, have you thought about doing it this way or have you thought about it that way? Um, there's, n there's always going to be more things. Uh, YouTube is a great resource. I absolutely agree. Um, there are, I think there's at least two or three videos related to Science Olympiad and this event. Um, it's not in the, it's not event footage, but there are some different practice events that have been held where uh, there's some perhaps cheesy commentary back and forth between um, students about how to build things and how their thoughts are going through the process and reminding them to inventory. So uh, I can actually put, I have those links somewhere. I can, um, they're posted on the Lacombe Science Libya website actually. So if you are on that website for Bridging the Gap, there is a video from 2019. And that video itself, that's got some information for you as well that maybe you, you maybe go watch that before you sit your kids down the first time to, to give you a, a little thought process boost as well. John, is there anything else that you want to add? Nope, I'd say it, you, we answered a lot of great questions today, and oh, maybe get uh, if we if we don't have any other questions, we'll wrap up today. And uh, just a reminder, we do have an FAQ system on our website, which will be up soon, and that'll be a way that you can get any additional questions answered. Thank you so much, Kelsey. All right, thank you all for joining. I hope you have a good rest of your day. John will be posting this on the Science Olympiad channel, so you can go back and review it. Um, the Always remember, if I said something that was incorrect and the rules say something different, the rules are correct. So use that as your, your litmus test. Make sure that you are doing whatever the rules say if you see a miscommunication in there. I didn't hear anything today, so good job. All right. Thank you all for your time. I hope you have a good rest of your day.